For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck it up. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. It seems as though we've been living through an imbalance in our seasons. A time to weep, a time to mourn. A time to break down, a time to refrain from embracing. We began this season almost a year ago when we were in Lent, and we waited. Advent came, and we waited. And now we find ourselves in another season of Lent, patiently waiting for a time to build up, a time to laugh, a time to dance, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace. But all is not lost in this season. Although we find ourselves in the doldrums, now is a time that we can prepare. Now is a time that we can learn, evaluate, and reflect. And certainly, if the events of the past two weeks have taught us anything, it is a reminder of how blessed we are and how grateful we can be for what we have been given and what is in our power to control during this time. So as we wait patiently, let us learn to plant seeds in this season and await the harvest. Let us worship together. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the wonder of each hour of the day and of the night, hill and vale, tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. For yourself, 
best gift divine to the world so freely given, agent of God's grand design, peace on earth and joy in heaven. Lord of all, to you we raise this our prayer of grateful praise. Our Old Testament reading is from Genesis 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 4, verses 13 through 25. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall they see thee, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that, what he had promised, he was able also to perform, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Our gospel reading today comes from Mark chapter 8. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake, for the sake of the gospel, will save it. And what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who were ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes into the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May we pray together. Gracious God, we have been following Jesus for a while now, 
And we know these familiar words about denying ourselves, taking up our crosses, and following. We hear them, we read them, but it's another thing entirely to live them. We live in a world with so many voices shouting for our attention. If you want to be happy, buy this car. If you want to be successful, follow this program. It's my money, and I don't have to share it. Oh God, these voices are loud, and they are constant, and they are so easy to believe. But these voices don't lead to life, and in the deepest part of ourselves, we know that. We know that you have come so that we might have life and have it abundantly. We have been receivers of grace from those we love. We've experienced the joy it is to be generous people. We have been forgiven by those in our lives who see beyond our selfishness. We have been loved when we didn't think we were worthy of love. And we know these things because you first loved us, and you have poured your grace and love and forgiveness out on us again and again and again. You, O oh God, are the Messiah and we want to follow. We want to hear your voice above all the other voices. So help us, God, to deny ourselves. Help us to take up our cross again and again and again. Help us, O oh God, to follow, because you lead to life. You, O oh God, are life, and we want to be your people. So we pray in the way you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I've been thinking this week about our Old Testament reading from the book of Genesis. It's the story of God making a covenant, or a promise, with Abraham and Sarah to be their God, and to be the God of all of their family who would come after them. This story reminds us that God has promised to be our God always. I have some pictures to help us think about these things together. God has made a covenant to be our God always. When we are kind to one another and when we are not. When we forgive one another and when we do not. When we share what we have and when we do not. God has made a covenant to be our God always. When we feel smart and when we do not. When we feel brave and when we do not, when we feel happy, and when we do not. God has made a covenant to be our God always. God promises that God will always be with us on our best days and on our worst days, on our happiest days, and on our saddest days. God is our God always. Thanks be to God. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for being our God always. Amen. Please join us for our responsive reading of Psalm 22. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard me when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. 
Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for them. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Still my soul. 